what is going on guys it's your boy Seso here we have a video here today bring guys a Photoshop tutorial how to create your cool gaming text effect as you guys can see here it's a pretty cool fun effect I think it can work for most uh, like gaming headers gaming thumbnails and I think it's just a super sweet thing to do because of course it's very customizable with whatever patterns you use colors you use font you use and all that good stuff so let's go ahead and jump into this video and of course you want to send it five likes on the video because the second down below which mostly be the PSD as you guys see here today and uh, yeah let's just get this thing going let's get this thing started all right guys so I think this thing going of course I'm gonna recommend you guys to use a really cool super nice bold and kind of like fun quirky font so for me the one I'm using in today's video is called uh, in uh, infinite justice okay so so what I also recommend you guys to do is actually kind of make it more even kind of like fun and energetic is actually take, uh, take each letter and remove them from the actual uh, layer right here. So what I mean by that is uh, when you have the make sure you guys spell it right. Okay. And right click uh, rasterize type and we're going to take each letter and use the lasso tool, which is L and R keyboard or this tool right here. Okay. Go over here and surround each uh, letter one by one, just like so. Then right click layer via cut and rinse and repeat. So you're going to go back to the original. You're going to go around. And you're gonna layer, oops, layer via cut, and you'll see just a second, okay? All right, now each letter is actually cut out. I'm just gonna take each letter, right click on one, control T to free transform it, and kind of just make it fun. I'm gonna make one smaller, just like this, right? Try to keep everything sort of in that same middle frame uh, so it doesn't get too weird when you put a stroke around it, right? We'll just kind of make this a little more smaller. We'll make the C a little bit bigger, right? We'll make this just kind of move in a little bit, kind of mess with the, uh, the spacing as well, right? Just kind of move these in, okay? Move the C in. Move this in. I think that looks pretty good, right? So just kind of moving it around. If you have like a really cool brush font, like maybe even like turn them, twist them, have fun with it, of course, but I'm going to keep it a little bit more simple for my side. Um, so when I have them all selected, I'm going to uh, select the first layer, hold shift, click on the last layer, select everything in between, and then I can press control G to make a uh, group, just like so. Then with this group, I can press control J to make a duplicate. And then I can either right click merge group or press control E to merge it all together to make it into one single layer and we can continue going on with the stroke. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and recommend you guys to double click, use a drop shadow, put your spread on a 100, your distance at zero and your size at 27. You'll see for me, I think this stroke size for me is pretty good. Now, if you want to have your stroke be something like this, where it's like fur further down, sort of like bottom heavy, almost like it's tilted in a way, you can move the distance, of course. However, I'm going to keep mine at zero. Keep my stroke size here. If you want to make it even bigger, go or be my guest, right? Press OK. Now, to make this stroke even cleaner, since it is Photoshop and it's not uh, Illustrator, I'm going to make a new layer right below this. Use my pen tool, and I'm actually going to highlight all the way around and kind of try to mimic, uh, I would say the, uh, how do you say it? the, mm, just the, the, the stroke. Okay. There's no way to say that. Uh, I'm just going to mimic this. So I'm going to go around, right? Kind of make every, all these lines nice and clean and uh, make sure I kind of have this looking good. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to show you guys at the end what it looks like. All right, cool. So now it's all connected. I'm going to go ahead and right click, uh, fill a color in. It doesn't really matter what color it is. But once you guys right click and fill a color, you can see if you turn off your drop shadow, just like so, you'll notice uh, this is the same color, by the way. So if you didn't notice, the nice little simple, clean lines. I'll untuck this. Check this. You can see how it looks. It just looks way, way cleaner when you put a little more effort into making the extra stroke look better and more illustrated, uh, illustrator wise, right? I'm actually going to take this uh, color, put this in the middle as you can see. And we're going to change our color scheme. So my text color, I'm going to actually change that. Either you can use one single color if you guys want to. And if you guys do that, you simply double click on it. Use a color overlay. But for me, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to right click that new layer. Go to clipping, uh, create clipping mask. And with this, I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to actually take each individual layer. Or excuse me, how do you say letter? There you go. And uh, make a different color. I'm going to do this one, this one, and like this one. And like this one. Sure. And then these will be purple. So then the other ones will actually be this nice little pink. Nice little color scheme kind of going on here. And the background color you'll see will change from yellow to this color over here. So color overlay. And we'll choose this purple right here once again. So if these hex codes, by the way, you can see right here in this box, if you guys choose to see them, press OK. Press OK again. Now I'm going to go ahead and say it's looking, it's looking, it's looking pretty cool. Okay. I'm going to right click and actually rasterize this layer for this layer right here. Right. So that color overlay, color overlay is no longer there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Before I do that, let's say backplate. Let's call these what these are. Like backplate, we have this being the actual text. And then we have this being the actual color highlights or just color, I guess you would say. Right. So the backplate, I'm going to take this backplate. I'm going to make a duplicate, put it below the actual layer, just like this. Gonna move this further down and I'll make sure I kind of line this up perfectly, right? You can see how this is like moving it down, but also lining it up with that perfect angle. Now I can use Control U on my keyboard to take my lightness 
and drag it down just like so to a good, I would even say pure black wouldn't look terrible. Uh, it wouldn't look terrible actually. But yeah, let's go pure black. Cool. So you're going to obviously notice that something is really odd about this spacing right here. I would recommend you guys to do it is literally click on that back layer, right? Have it selected, use your brush, uh, hold alt and select the same black that you guys have or whatever color you guys chose to use, right? Take a nice 100% uh, hardness brush and just take it and kind of just literally just draw or you can use a pen tool. It doesn't really matter. That's something like really, really, really quickly uh, or really quick, but also it does mess up. I'm, I should, should recommend you guys use a pen tool way cleaner, but uh, that works too, right? So once you guys have that all good and cleared, I'm gonna go ahead and say to you guys, now the fun little, uh, I guess the fun part about actually putting this, some effects on the front plate. So what I'm gonna suggest, uh, suggest you guys to do is take the actual text and the color. I'm gonna actually group them together. I'm gonna make a backup. So I'm just gonna call this B1 for backup, make a duplicate of it, merge it together, just like so. We're gonna have this B1 copy here. I'm gonna take this, double click on it for my layer styles. I'm gonna add a inner glow. Okay, with this inner glow, I'm using a color basically the same one as this purple here. My uh, blood mode is on linear dodge add, and my path is on 40. I'll just say, just keep it nice and clean. Um, whatever color you guys choose, I would suggest you guys just literally hi highlight over, over, excuse me, when you guys click on the color, right? Highlight over whatever color you guys chose for that middle plate. If it's like orange and blue, just choose that orange and kind of use the same exact settings, right? As followed, zero and 13 size, and you should be good to go. So, I'm gonna press OK. Now I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna take this copy just like so by compressing Control J, right? Turn the fill all the way off. That makes the uh, actual thing uh, that's being shown on the actual. How do you say? It? Makes the opacity go away, but only that stays is the layer styles, right? So I'm gonna turn off my inner glow. I'm gonna double click on it though, and I'm gonna go into satin. And with this, I'm gonna press OK. And my the settings for satin, by the way, is 25. Uh, blend mode on multiply. Five, uh, basically a pure black. Uh, 50 distance and 125 size you press ok then what you want to do is you want to go onto your layer mask right take a black brush right you'll see my nice black brush with uh, zero hardness and you want to click around and just give your text a little bit of depth uh, just by using that sort of little satin you did you can see it's going to add like a little bit of depth in weird spots it just makes it kind of pop out a little bit more Okay, now once you've done that, I'm gonna add you, uh, uh, recommend you guys to take another copy of the B1, just like so, right? You press Control J or hold Alt and put it over that layer, okay? I'm gonna turn my fill off again, take my inner glow, turn it off again. So I'm gonna double click on this one. We're gonna go to inner shadow and we're gonna copy these settings being as followed, being a white on blood mode normal, 90 angle. If you wanna change the angle, of course you can. I'm gonna keep it on 90 for me personally. Uh, nine distance, zero choke, and five size. Look at this really cool shear that's almost like super 3D like, right? I'm gonna press OK. Same exact thing, layer mask, take my brush. I'm gonna just kind of say, move this just like so. Give myself a nice cool little, uh, little glow there. Now, if you don't want it to have a little weird glow going on like this, you can see how it's almost erasing, but also adding the effect right under it. I would suggest you guys to do is, right before you do this before you actually erase anything you can see it's turning black, uh, pure white nothing's here anymore right click on it uh convert to a smart object and then rasterize it uh, oh, you don't have to rasterize it but then put on the layer mask and now if you erase it it won't add the effect again like while you're erasing of course right so that looks pretty clean to me all right i'm happy about that so this back plate here i'm actually gonna put a satin on as well so double click on it we're gonna use satin right same exact setting i'm just gonna lower the opacity about 15 or so to about 15 or so press okay and we're looking really close to what's going on here i would say what's going on here lastly is sort of like the fun little things when it comes to like a uh how do you call english is hard pattern got it we're good see i just, just took a little bit um i'm gonna go ahead so to do the pattern i'm gonna right click excuse me not right click we're gonna actually take all these uh layers here for the front plate group them together again and make another backup Control J, so this is backup two now. We've gotten pretty far, okay? And this backup two, I'm gonna take this group that we uh, duplicated for it and merge it together with Control E. Take our text, we're just gonna name it text, right? Now at this, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer. Right click, convert, uh, excuse me, clip mask, uh, create a clip mask, I don't know why I'm saying convert a lot. Uh, take this, go around. Now, if you guys do not have patterns, I will put a pattern pack in the description down below that you guys of course use. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take it, fill it in with any color right now, it doesn't really matter. Lower my fill all the way down to zero, right? Simple stuff that's going on here. Take a pattern overlay. Now, if you guys have patterns, you can make some really cool little simple, uh, fun things, right? I'll just use like, let's use, sure, let's just use this one. I'm gonna press okay. Right now we have this. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rasterize it just like so. 
that'll give me the option to then, when I layer mask, I can erase it and make it look nice and clean. Like a nice little thing right there. This is a different one than I did before, but I think it looks pretty cool still. Okay, now secondly, and almost like lastly, when it comes to the front plane, we're gonna make another new layer. Make sure we clip mask that new layer. Okay, I'm gonna take a third color. Now, you might not have a three tone secondary color or a three tone sort of like color scheme in your mind. Right now, I already have that plan, right? So, I would suggest you guys, of course, use like Ninja Platter or Plat Ninja Palette or something like that, just to kind of have like if you want to look for some more colors. But I just wanted to use these. If you don't want to use a different color, maybe you just take a purple or a pink, or you, if you use two colors at least, right? You take one of the other color and you put it over that other color, right? If I'm gonna use this, so let's something like this. Right, does that make a little bit of sense? But for me, I'm gonna use a third color because it's a little bit fun that way. Okay, so I'm gonna use this yellow. And I'm gonna say, boom, we're gonna put yellow here. And we're gonna put yellow like right here. It looks really good on both these purple and pinks. So I'm gonna say, I'm a fan of that. That looks pretty good. So to kind of finalize this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and group all this together. Okay, press Control J, of course, make a duplicate of it. And then Control E, once again, I merge all together. You'll see this nice little simple, simple, like fully on merge thing. Okay, now once I have this, I'm gonna press Control J once again, and with this one, we're gonna right click, we're gonna convert to a smart uh, object, fill, uh, filter, excuse me, camera raw filter, and with this, we're gonna go ahead and turn up, let's put it on Y, as you can see both before and afters. Okay, we're gonna turn up the clarity, right? You see the background here, being that it was a darker color before, if you take your shadows, you lower this, you get that dark color back, Right, your blacks can get this dark color back. You wanna take your highlights, you wanna put them up maybe a little bit to put those uh, super nice tone codes that you put in the actual first place. Make sure they're showing really well, right? You see it nice and bright, and if you want to, you can add more saturation to them. A little more luminance if you guys wish to as well. Okay, looking pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's just do a little bit of sharpening here. Right, and then I'm gonna go into the HLSL adjustments. So what this is, is hue, saturation, luminance adjustments. So if you want to, if you wanna change the saturation on one, if you wanna be like super bright, or you wanna be black and white, right? For whatever reason. But if you want the orange to really stand out, you put that saturation up. For me, I'm gonna say the orange, I want it to stand out a little bit. I also want the purples to stand out a little bit. And then I want to take the hue, and you might know, you might not know it looks really cool, but if you take the hue of the oranges and move it to the left and right, you'll see that of course changes the color, and you might find another, another strong color scheme that might work for you. I'm gonna actually go ahead and say that something like this looks pretty cool, right? We'll take the reds even, okay? And once you guys say, I'm pretty much satisfied, we're gonna press okay. And you're gonna see, you get yourself a very simple and clean looking text effect that of course you can put on, I guess you would say like banners and stuff like that. If you wanna put like a Fortnite little header going on, you put this off to the left, you put the Fortnite character off to the right, maybe you match the color scheme of the actual skin that you guys are using in the actual header, but, it's super simple, super fun, and it's just super clean to just use. And if you guys want to put even more effort into it, you can just make a new layer, clip mask anything onto it, even before you actually put on the uh, camera filter raw, right? You can go with like your brushes, if you have cool brushes as well. I'll put all the stuff in the description down below if you guys would like to get it. Um, like something like this, right? You can just add some really quirky, fun little stuff. Put it on like a blur, motion blur. You can like blur some stuff just like this, right? And we'll take an eraser and kind of erase around the edges. And around these other spots and just get some more fun little texture in there however that was crap i should probably done it before i rasterize or before i did this like in this area here is what i mean before i all combine it all together but i hope you guys get it i hope you guys understand and i hope it was just something super fun and just understanding it just it, make your text look cool that's all i mean right it's just simple and fun and uh, yeah i hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today uh, 275 likes on the video, you can see it down below, which will most likely be this PSD that, of course, break down. I'll have named all that good stuff. And you guys have been killing it. You guys have been giving me so much love from last um, videos. I just literally appreciate you guys so very much. Uh, the font video, like, took off. I think I gained, like, 600 subscribers from that video. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are new, and you guys are like to enjoy this. Hopefully, if you guys also watch this, you guys are not subscribed yet. You're weird. Don't be weird. Follow me. Love me. And I'll love you back. Got you. So I'll tell you guys later. So for HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive. And stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. Oh, and for the people who stay to the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys this little tip here. If you guys are wondering how to get the glow, you just simply just use a brush, a soft brush, on a new layer, right? You guys use a nice little soft brush, new layer. You want to basically hold Alt and highlight one of the colors you guys see on your text. You make it a little more smaller. You click once over here, click once over there. We'll change the color a little bit. Click once over here, and then change your blend mode from normal to linear dodge add. And you got yourself a cool little glow that you can put on the text as well. And you can put this in pretty much anywhere on the text, but of course I'm just gonna put it on the sides here. Erase around the edges, and there's your little glow. You're good to go. Lit.